This is the Germont British News, presenting the world to the world. Revealed to the world after years of secrecy, the story of radar can now be told. Far greater than the atomic bomb has been the war-winning part played by this scientific miracle. The heart of radar is the cathode ray tube, like that used in television. Acting as a screen, it registers radio short waves transmitted by the sender. When these waves strike an object, such as a plane, they echo back and are then picked up and recorded. The small peak, known as a pip, gives the distance of the plane from the transmitter. By this means, its course and speed can be accurately measured. Waves echoed back by all planes are picked up in this way. Enemy planes show a constant, unvarying pattern. Allied planes are equipped with apparatus to vary the oscillation. Notice the reaction of the pip. Here is the method by which a large war factory or a whole city can be protected by the vigilant echo of radar. History has recorded the part it played in helping the RAF to smash the Luftwaffe in 1940. Radar picks out the first enemy plane a hundred miles away. Speed and course are flashed to RAF Group Operations Room, the nerve center of air defense. Around the huge plotting table, WAFs seem to be playing a fantastic game of billiards as they mark the position of enemy aircraft located by radar. Sitting above the plotting table is the controller, who directs every move in the invisible battle. In direct radio contact with every part of his group, he knows the strength and direction of each attack. A night raid has begun. Searchlight batteries prepare to play their part in the pattern of defense. Not far away, the revolving aerial of a radar truck keeps constant check on everything within range. ATS girls at the controls watch the approaching attack through radar's magic eye. The target is located and the ak, -AK opens up. <laughs> to planes in distress, radar has been a lifesaver without equal. Returning from a mission, a damaged bomber is menaced by fire. The firefighting equipment can no longer cope with the flames, so the radio operator sends out an SOS. Back in the plotting room, the blazing plane is quickly located. Preparing for a crash landing in the sea, the crew's last act is to destroy the radar equipment to keep it out of enemy hands. crew take to their raft, knowing that, thanks to radar, help is on the way. The airman's greatest enemy, fog, was also conquered by radar. The radio operator is told to switch in to the radar wave, and from then on, in airman's language, he's on the beam. From war to peace, radar brings new safety to those who sail with the merchant navy. In clear weather, the job of navigating the confined waters of a busy river is comparatively easy. But with the old enemy fog, it becomes an almost impossible task, and this is where radar once more comes in. On the bridge is a plan position indicator, or PPI, which shows a complete chart of the river. Land is shown as heavy white masses and lines, and other ships as white spots moving about the center. Steaming by the indicator, the captain can navigate in the thickest fog without danger of collision or running aground. This is part of the Thames estuary, with South End Pier on the northern side and boom defences clearly seen across the river. The captain passes on orders to the officer of the watch, who gives the coxswain the correct course. As with aircraft on the beam, the ship comes through to safety. Our merchant seamen join with the Navy, the Army and the Air Force in giving thanks for a weapon of war with a great destiny ahead for the years of peace. <laughs>